Hello everyone, I am back. Tiger's Abyss here with, oh my god, oh my god, I need a haircut, that's what I need, with a, with a desire for a new haircut, that's what, no. As you see by the title of this video, hopefully, this is a video response to Color from the Truth and Story. I don't think she meant this to be like a tag or anything, but I saw it and I'm like, girl, which are mine? And then when she did that, and I'm like, oh, I just remembered Kelly Bear, you know, she also did a, a five decks you can't live without update. So I'm like, okay, my collection blew up after that. So uh, by that, I mean exploded into a multitude of decks. And I just ordered uh, for, from a good, good person. <laughs> I, wouldn't I wouldn't consider her a friend yet. <laughs> but she has uh, said, but I was, I was going to order the a Curious Oracle. And I said, I said, what's, what, like, is, does that, is anyone willing to give theirs up? You know, sell it, trade it. What's going on? Let's see. I, I want it. Like, I missed out on it. I want it. And so she said, I was like, I don't use mine. You can have mine. I can sell it to you. And I'm like, shook. <laughs> and I wanted it. I'm like, yes, please. Yes. And then I messaged her. I'm like, okay, but I'm broke right now. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to work around that. So we're going to have to wait a little while. And she's like, oh, no, it's fine. Whatever. You know, I can hold it for you. You know, I'm like, Yes, <laughs> and so because she because the creator only prints them in runs of 100 and I am super sweaty here where I'm at it is sweltering it is hot I legit just saw like a black widow like come out for a little while not even a minute passed and then it crawled back into its little shady spot I'm like <laughs> okay but anyway so I got that coming in so that would pro I don't know maybe it's just because of the hype I'm not sure how well I would connect with it but you know, who knows? I may not connect with it, and I may sell it off or trade it for a different deck, but who knows? Um, who knows where I go with it, but... Uh, where was I? I'm not sure if she'll even do another printing. She she really... The creator wanted it to be, like, a very small, personal kind of deck, which I totally understand, and I totally see where she's coming at, but come on. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think she wanted that for more of a lack of mass production, because I'm pretty sure a publisher would have picked her up. But you know what? I, I, I admire that she that she uh, insists on making them self-published. And I do want to order her tarot deck, but it's not like high on my list. There's other decks that I want to get. But anyways, that is not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about my 10 soul decks. Um, these are just either my very first decks or the decks that I just prefer and decks that I've just really connected to and have like affected me either in my tarot journey, like in learning wise, or just like have like maybe like triggered something within me and that is what I say is that but anyways but anyways <laughs> where was I? I feel like I'm forgetting something eh well I'll talk about it later wait no actually <laughs> but uh well yeah well I don't know I don't know should I continue on this I don't want to talk too long and then waste the time but anyways no <laughs> uh my very first Rider Waite Smith I'm actually falling back in love with it but I don't want, really want to use it because it's old but it is my very, very first, very first tarot deck ever. And probably the very first tarot deck ever touched by, by any by any member of my family. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying me. I'm, by, I'm like the only member of my family that has ever even touched a tarot deck. As far as I can tell, on my dad's side, I'm thinking. But my mom's side, I'm not really sure. But moving forward, um, it's just a classic Rider Waite Smith. But it's, it's a university books. It's like we went to a vintage shop or an antique store. Look at how clean and clear, like, I didn't really appreciate, like, the the crispness of the King of Pentacles here, you know? So, yeah, it's not, it's focusing on me. Like, don't focus on me, focus on this guy. Come on. Come on. I don't know if you guys can see, but his, his, like, you can, you can see the difference between, like, the vines and the grapes and whatnot. So, yeah. But there are some, like, I call it, like, ink bleedings, where, like, ink kind of bleeds over to other parts. You know, some of them are a little bit used and worn. Look at the colors on that. I think they're very pot. The colors really are, vi are vibrant. Look at right here. This is what I'm talking about. Color bleeding right here on the corner where it should just be like a few black dashes. It has bled through and kind of like made this blotch right there, which is a little downside of it. But you know what? I, I like it. The, the cardstock is very thin and I don't really like it. But, but you know what? The, the vintage smell, even through edging, which thank God I got BIC, B-I-C markers. You know, to to edge these because they're old, they're 
odorless, odorless. They don't smell as much as Sharpie. So yeah, it does keep its, it does keep its old book smell, which I love. So yeah, University Books, if you guys can get a hand on, get your hands on it, then you know for sure it's a vintage deck. But there are other decks out there of Rider Waite Smith that are way better. So yeah, so yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, my next deck is my very first deck that I ever did a reading on myself with, which is like, you know, I did it like, lol, what should I do, you know? <laughs> and so... And I did it, and I read it, and it was just, it just connected with me. Like, it was like, I never thought, like, I'm like, okay, these people are like, oh my god, this deck connected with me. And I'm just watching, like, mm, sure. And then I read it with this, with this deck, and I'm like, okay, I see what they're coming at. <laughs> so, and that is the Wildwood Tarot. I just, I don't know, it's like, and I know it's a very different system. And I, and I just kind of went off on the keywords, and I kind of read the guidebook on it, and like, the meat and the message that I was getting from it really connected with me. And honestly, I believe it's this deck that... I asked and I'm all like, should I do, a, should I start a YouTube channel? And it said yes. <laughs> so it's just, I'm just like, okay, I kind of want to start a YouTube channel. Should I start it? Should I? And I asked the, and I asked the cards and Will Worthington's beautiful artwork came through and said yes. Now I do kind of low key want the, the Greenwood Tarot, but that tarot is whew, not easy to find. And the creator just came out with an like an oracle. I want to say I don't I don't know. I saw it at Barnes and Noble even. I saw the oracle, and then or no, I'm not sure if I saw the video of Kelly that she did of the of the creator that did the Greenwood Tarot. She released an oracle, and I'm not sure if I saw the if I saw the deck first and I saw it and I'm like, hmm, what is this? Or I saw the um, her video, but I didn't really click on it. I didn't really watch it all the way through. And then I went to Barnes and Noble the other day, and then. I saw it and I'm like, oh look, there it is. But as, as of the last few times that I went, it's not there anymore. It just, I just love this deck. It's, it's like the very first deck I bought for myself. I ordered from the internet. So yeah. Uh, and with that deck, I ordered at the same time as well a deck that I don't really recommend for beginners. But after like kind of studying tarot more and more, I'm like, okay, you know what? Honestly, order whatever you want. But cover your bases when you order a deck, you know? And this, and that is the amazing, popular Mariel. <laughs> Honestly, so far, nothing has ever come close to this deck in terms of artistic uh, artwork. Ooh, no, let's not, put, let's not put you there. You're all slidey on my leg. You know, like, I've, like, Mary, you can tell that Mary White put so much time and effort and care into this deck. And this Three of Swords made me look at the Three of Swords in a completely different light other than just heartache, you know, it's, it's, it helped me learn <laughs> different things from, from it. And it also helped me notice connections from the Major Arcana to the Minor Arcana, which honestly really, really is helpful because that's the point of Terry. You're supposed to like connect other cards together and read the reading as a whole, you know. So when you see references to other cards in the deck, oh my gosh, the Three of Cups, let's see these, so... Oh. Oh, the Hierophant. Nobody likes the Hierophant, Mary White. Please. <laughs> she changed the star, but not the Hierophant. Like, come on. <laughs> if you go on e Eclectic Tarot, you can see, like, the old star card. And it looks kind of interesting. I don't know what, how to feel about it, but I do like the star card that she chose for this deck. But anyways, moving forward. Uh, let's see. My, my, one of the... Let's see. I'm trying to think of which one I should do next. Uh, this one, because this is one that has been on my wish list for like a long, long time, and I saved up purposefully for this deck, because one, I really did, I love Arthur Rackham's artwork, but I, I saw the, 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 the ring, uh, oracle, not ring oracle, the ring tarot, which does look nice, it's Arthur Rackham's artwork, but honestly, this one, <laughs> sorry, I got a little feather in my throat. Uh, Arthur Rackham's artwork, it just comes out way clearer here. And, like, I have a book, but, like, they kind of did, like, a... Oh, let's make it look more aged kind of look here. Oh, my gosh, it's just... His artwork is so detailed and so fine in lines. It's, like, you can't really see what's going on from, like, this kind of position. So I'm going to cover my face with it. Hopefully it'll focus more on that. I don't know. But the face-forward camera is different. But, yeah. Oh, and then you have some of these horizontal cards I... Oh, <laughs> How about I put the horizontal cards correctly? Like that. Look at that, just beautiful. Clear, and you can totally, like, this is, this does 
honor Arthur Rackham, and it's won awards, and for good reason. It's a unique little system here, it's just, it's beautiful, that's all I can say, and it's my favorite, favorite one. And I do love how you can also pick your own backings on it, there's like seven different backs that you can pick, so it can kind of make it your own, you know? And I love it, and I chose this one, uh, which, honestly, I was gonna order this back, like, when I was looking through Etsy for, te for decks, I saw this back, and I said, this one. And then when I saw Kelly from the Truth of Story, I got so jealous of her when she got it. I'm like, oh. <gasps> and, and I saw that she also got this back. And I'm like, great minds think alike. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to put you here. I, I rarely use it. But anyways, so just to clear out the last Oracle that I have. It's also an indie deck, but it's also very similar to the Rackham where it has horizontal cards. And it's uh, it's self-produced. But this one is is the Pinchos du Monde. Oracle, and I found this beautiful jewelry box that, because my mom has a bunch of jewelry boxes that she's not using, and I completely lost the lid. Oh, here's the lid. And if it's perfectly in there, but anyways, uh, it's gorgeous. It's borderless. It's amazing. It reminds me a lot of a like a Sibylla or maybe a Lenormand e kind of take on it. It's a very very unique uh, system. I feel it's very intuitive. There's no guidebook or PDF for it. And so, yeah, the, what is it, the seaside? Yeah, look at that, beautiful. The cold breeze, this card always pops up for me when I'm like either like, because uh, I like to shuffle like fate with the cards looking at me, so it, it, she'll like usually just pop up and look at me like, why are you wasting your time? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't call me out on that. And then this one, you know, it all, some of the artwork is on the Tarot of Delphi, but I don't care because it's in the, it's in the public domain. Come on. But uh, but how she uses this artwork, this artwork is for the devotee of... I'm making sure no one's like here because my dog like got crazy right now. I'm like, what's going on? But, um, but yeah, this is used for the devotee of discs. Yeah, devotee of discs or coins. Uh, and she's like tending to this altar of Athena, not Athena, uh, of Aphrodite. But here it's just red for the red chakra is what she intended it for. But I'm using it more like a like the color itself, what we associate the color with, you know. That's kind of how I work with it. Uh, moving forward, uh, let's just get this one through. I don't know why, but I do love the Thoth system. I'm falling in love more and more with it. And I'm just falling in love with Lady Frida Harris's artwork. So this might be the Thoth soul deck, but I need to study more with it before I can truly connect with it, but it's a contender, so I was looking at my other decks and I'm like, honestly, we'll use this one. And I do want to get a larger size, and I am going to order that, like, probably today. <laughs> um, so yeah, look at that Eon card right there. And I'm, I, like, because it's like, this is the only size that I have, and it's super small. I mean, compare it to the Rackham Oracle, it's like, Come on, okay, well, it's not really a good way to use stacks, but yeah, you can see how the rack I'm just is much larger <laughs> in size. Uh, but yeah, I think, like, you can tell, like, with this deck. When I see a tarot deck, I want it to have imagery in there that has a point to it. So it's like, so it's like when you see something in a tarot deck and you're like, what is that for? Don't just assume that they just did it because it looked pretty. No, they put it in there for a reason. Kind of like the three symbols on the on the magician card, uh, in the radio and the right away Smith. That's those three symbols have popped up like twice. One in the <gasps> ooh oh okay. Well, no, we're gonna talk. I just remembered something that I wanted to talk about, but we're gonna have to keep moving forward. My first Baba Studio deck, which has honestly struck me as like probably my childhood deck because it has like it's just reminded me a lot of like past moments that I've had, that I've experienced in my life. <laughs> so it's more of a nostalgia, kind of very Six of Cups kind of energy here, but I still like it, but I think it can also be very direct too. Like look at that, the lovers here, there's two alternate lovers card, which I love the other lovers card with Dante and uh, Beatrice. Here's the Queen of Swords, look at her. Baba Studios knows how to, how to put in the right symbolism and depiction of the of the Rider Waite Smith symbolism in a new but alternative way. It just works. You know, there's not tons of symbols like in the Rider Waite Smith, but you but if you know your Rider Waite Smith, you're gonna still I think they won't disappoint because, you know, they know their shit. That's all I can say. And I love this deck. Oh my gosh. What uh, one little criticism that I will say is 
with the king of wands I, i'm pretty sure it's this guy right here that's like listening to him and not the guy with the with the with the loot um but i'm pretty sure you know it's like it's kind of confusing you don't know who is who on the king of on the kings you know oh, look at the double card perfect for the double card it's about attraction and attachment and addiction just oh moving forward though oh and this chair i love how they always have their chariots flying too this is a little interesting with Wheel of Fortune, which I kind of want to read what the story is behind this. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, and then Judgment. A little bit. Judgment has always been like a very religious card, but this one's like even more so. But it looks more... Actually, this one looks more... Oh, no. They have fairy wings, so no. Never mind. Not religious. If they had angel wings, then they'd be super religious. <laughs> so it, kind of religious, kind of not. Who knows? Uh, oh, right. I also want... Oh, my gosh. This, uh, I just keep remembering stuff, but we'll talk about it towards the end. We're going through these real quick. Okay, so before I go to my very favoriteest deck and the one that I've scoured the internet for, if you guys know, if you guys have been around for a long time, you'll know what, what that deck is. But first, one deck that has actually been, that has actually just like, like at first, you know when you're swimming and you have like, and you can kind of stand up and have like your neck above the water, but like you're kind of like swaying and being pushed towards a deeper end and you don't really know it and you don't know well you know there's a deep end but you think oh I'm still in a good area well then you lift your feet up a little just to like float up a little and then you put them down and you fucking sink back down that's this deck <laughs> it's really surprised me there's tons of symbolism in here and a lot of sacred there's like sacred geometry there's astrology and Kabbalah this deck is I call it its own system even I put it like close to the Mary L or the Thoth or the Rider Waite Smith in terms of like symbolism. I'd call it a Golden Dawn-ish deck, but she takes it more of a more like kind of like trying to take a healing approach to it. Is that a wasp? Oh Jesus. I hope there's no wasp near me. Jesus Christ. Anyways, but yeah, she takes a very like, I don't know, it's like it's it's a very positive deck, but it's a very real deck at the same time. You know, it's it you can tell that this deck is here to help. And I just got the book for it because, like, I was looking at the cards and it's like they're trying to talk to me, but there's like a, but they're in like a soundproof room and I can't really hear what they're trying, what they're trying to tell me. <laughs> so I'm like, what? Why did she do this? Why did she put this in here? Why did she design it like this? So hopefully with the book, I'm pretty sure because the book is really meaty. She, so she does like tons of like paragraphs on each of the cards, even the minor arcana, and the court cards even. So yeah, I just love this. And this this here actually, this card, uh, the lily and the rose have been like popping up for me a lot. Along with the Prince of, oh my god, I completely forgot. I did like a few like practice readings for whatever reason, I can't remember, last night. Um, probably just for myself, but I kept doing a reading and Knight of Cups. No, Prince of, Prince of Cups. Prince of Cups, every time. Prince of Cups. I'm like, okay, okay, now I gotta read on this Prince of Cups because I don't know what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> Because I've done like three and it's like, and it came up for all three of them. And I'm like, oh my god, okay. Why do you need to tell me Thoth? <laughs> but yeah, uh, moving forward, uh, this one is just a deck that I only did one reading for somebody else with it. And I think that'll be the last reading I'll ever do for somebody else with this deck. Because uh, it's not because it doesn't work well with others. I just don't want it to work with others. <laughs> I, I think this is a very, very personal deck and... Kelly from the Truth and Story, this is all her fault. She is in love with this deck, okay? If it's not the Marielle, it's, or the Bohemian Gothic, it's this one that she's in love with. And I am in love with this one too. I just, I don't use it too much, but I feel like this is just one card, this is a deck that you can like pull out a card and look at it for like a good hour and like just get lost into Margaret Peterson's artwork. So yeah. It is a shame that I got the one with the borders on the back, but you know what? Whatever. I got the art. That's all I want. That's all I care about. And maybe I will trim it. No, I won't trim it. How dare I say that? No, I couldn't. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And like you can, like you really, you really have to focus on the art. Like see what's in the artwork. What's on the borders. What's going on. Oh, magic, my gosh. Mother of coins. I love the core cards in here, and I love the colors that she uses here. 
I, I hope my camera's doing it justice, because... Whew. Oh, look at that. Ten of swords, or ten of feathers? Yeah, with the crows up there. Really reminds me of the Japaritza tarot. The crone, oh my gosh. Tarot of the crone. That's my next tarot deck that I'm definitely going to buy. Maybe I'll save up for that. I don't know, I'll have to see. Five of coins with this weird mask going on here. Now let's see what else we have here. I think that's strength and the hanged man with the two of flames. Beautiful. Just such a beautiful deck. I So yeah, I feel like I could just meditate with the deck. Like people always say, oh you can just sit down and meditate with the cards. I'm like, no, like there's only so much I can look at. This one, there's a lot I can look at, and I can just stare at it and just stop and stare for hours. But then I realize I have to do something and I have to get up and do it. <laughs> Anyways, and the last one, I hope that was 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and 10! I, I hope I counted that right. <laughs> and number 10 is, I don't know if you guys seen it when I pulled it down, but it is the Tarot of Delphi. I'm super excited for, uh, for, for J.D. Hildegard Hinkle's new deck. Uh, the Majestic Earth Tarot. It looks gorgeous. It's borderless. It's, um, it is an art style that I actually kind of like, where it's like this vast kind of like, it's like, it's like even though the painting itself is small, it's vast and big and there's a lot going on in it, you know, and that's what I think tarot is, you know, you, 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 you gotta look at the little things in here that build up and layer onto this onion or cake. I don't know, whatever you guys prefer. But this one though, I love it because it keeps, it uses, it, 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 um, she curates all these pieces of art, but she keeps it consistent to Greek and Roman, uh, themes, and she chooses them perfectly for each of the meanings of the cards. You know, and I'm super excited to see what she writes about in, in her book. Look at this devotee of cups. Oh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, the Enchantress of Coins. Probably one of the most... But, like, all the Enchantress cards are, like, the best. Meh, the Star card was meh. I already seen it. Been there, done that. But it works. <laughs> uh, the Shipwreck right here with the Sirens. Is that the Five of... No, nine of, nine of Cups. I'm sorry, I'm, like, reading this weirdly. I can't really read it like that. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Two of Wands. Oh! That one fell. Oh, my gosh. We'll get it later. <laughs> uh, the Six of Wands, I believe, yes. And the Nine of Swords. Devotee of Wands. Something's on me. Oh, Jesus. Is it a hair? Probably just a hair. Oh my gosh. Three of Cups. Oh, and the Magician. What fell? Oh, the Eight of Wands. Okay. Calm down. Eight of Wands. Freaking launching out like that. That with... With Persephone returning to series. So yeah, I just love this deck. And I'm thinking of getting the Mythic Oracle from the from uh, Raven Phelan. Uh, because she, because I think it will just work perfectly with this one, you know, Greek and Greek or Roman gods, you know, with a Greek and Roman tarot deck, like, come on. Or I'd use it with the uh, Dreams of Gaia. Nah, Messenger seems to work more with that one. I don't know. That's that's on aesthetically, aesthetic. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? When it comes to oracles and tarot working together, I literally chose two random decks. Like it, I got the the Earthbound Oracle and the Bohemian Gothic Tarot, and I did a reading with that, and I just drew one card with the Earthbound Oracle, and it worked perfectly. It, like, just flowed smoothly, like butter. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but anyways, good news for me, at least. It's not, well, okay, it's kind of good news, semi-good news. It's not immediate, and, I, and we're still kind of working on it, but is that what was bothering me? Jesus, freaking bug. Uh, so, good news also for my sister, though. Oh, I have, I, I always have to make this about myself, though, but, uh, my sister, she just, she applied for a job at uh, an elementary school, 
and she may and she got the job. So that means that I'm going to have to be babysitting my uh, my nephew way more, <laughs> way more often. Probably back to five days a week, twenty four seven. Uh, but that means that. But now that she will be getting into more money, that means that she's going to be able to pay me more and that means more money for me that means aka more decks for me and also food <laughs> decks and food that's all I want oh and music I'm just gonna be able and I'm also going to be able to actually more importantly than that because you know bitch, that, but I say decks first because that's what this channel is really more about but also like just helping out with my mama <laughs> you know she's all like I need you to pay your phone bill I'm like I can't sell any readings because that's my because mostly because I ain't got no shop to sell them from but yeah, but I still want to do this I hopefully I'm gonna be able to fit this into the schedule my youtube channel uh, Probably when when my nephew takes his nap. I'll be able to come in here and record Usually for a good hour, and that's really all I need so yeah, uh, there's that so I don't know We're still gonna work out a price range for me But hopefully it's gonna be way more than what I was than what I was charging her before because back then it used to be okay I'm just helping you out because you're going to school. I'm your brother I'll help you out with your with your evil child. <laughs> Just kidding, no, not, my nephew is the best. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully that means more decks, more indie decks. My gosh, I don't have to wait for it. And I'm like, and then I was thinking, and so school starts back in, up in August. And so she's like, and so she's like, hopefully like bi-monthly or whatever. And then hopefully by then, which is September, uh, the... Jonasa Jao's tarot will be back up, which is what he said. I don't know if he's reprinting. Okay, it looks like he has two editions, or it's gonna be just one second edition, or it's gonna because he has one which is like the normal uh, original size with like borders all around, and then the other is just like borders on the top and the bottom. Top and the bottom. <laughs> uh, because I don't, I don't know if, if he's gonna sell both of those. If he does, I hope he can because I want the original kind without the board with with the borders maybe i don't know maybe i'll buy both who knows i love that deck that deck looks gorgeous and i love his artwork but moving forward uh there's tons of decks coming out and there's even more decks already out like the darkness of light tower is already out to buy i think maybe next month it'll be out to buy i don't know i can't i can't remember but tons of decks coming out and me with no money there's this job opportunity that i have coming up with taking care of my nephew and finally I could actually consider it more of a job rather than like a, a chore <laughs> uh, so yeah we'll just see we'll just see what we can work out here so yeah uh, what else but that's that's like the best news hopefully I can save up for a car hopefully <laughs> uh, so yeah babysitting that's what I'm gonna be maybe I can put that on my resume finally finally something I can put on my resume um, what else? There's some other stuff. Oh, right. Okay, before I sign off uh, and I say bye, I want you guys today a new episode of this podcast I just listened to last week. And I thought it was going to come out Tuesday, but then I checked it and then I reread it and it's like, oh, Thursday. But if you subscribe to them, it'll come out on Wednesday for you. Point is, um, uh, it is the from the creator of the Tabula Mundi and the Rosetta Tarot. It is the... Fortune's Wheelhouse, that's what it's called, and you can listen to it on Google Play, on iTunes, uh, on, I think she called it Stitcher? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure, but it's a podcast. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. Uh, she, they are basically going through and breaking down the symbolism of each of the major arcana, and that's what they're going to do initially, but if they, but if you back them on Patreon or support them or whatever, or what, however they need to be supported to reach their goal, they can do the full 78 cards, which... I am so excited for it. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. Unfortunately, I can't support them. Maybe when I start working for my sister, <laughs> I can I can support them. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so, she... Uh, so, a new episode came out, and it is The High Priestess. The last week, they just released The Fool and The Magician. They're amazing. They go through each and every single one of the symbolisms uh, that it, within each of the decks uh, of the Rider Waite Smith and the Thoth. So, go check that out. Uh, already, like I said, three episodes already out. After this, I'm probably gonna listen to the to the podcast while I'm waiting for this to upload. 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, and I'm trying to think of what else. Anything new, anything new, anything new, nothing new. Okay, so yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys continue this. I hope you guys make this a tag and spreads like wildfire, like Calibre's five decks you can't live without, which again, I am going to do an update on very soon. I'm already at my 30 minute mark. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I rambled way too long. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.